I'll be honest, this isn't usually the sort of place I will consider making a YouTube video from, or taking photographs. But there's an old wooden boat down there, and I thought it made for a fun subject for an infrared converted camera. Let's get stuck in, see what we can do. So this is my Olympus Pen EP1. I bought this a couple of months ago with the intention of shooting some infrared photography in the summer months, but I had a few hours free today and I thought, let's go out and have a play with the camera, get to know it a little bit. I'm still a little bit foreign to it. The controls are a little bit here, there and everywhere. I've not really used it too much. So I'll just come out, have a play with it and see how the camera responds. So the first subject is this old wooden boat. It's a little bit ju juxta ju that, that way, juxtaposition with the old wooden boat against the new engineering project of the chemical plant behind it. Now this is a subject that I would shy away from at most points, but I just thought having the old wooden boat there with some modern engineering behind it, it may work quite nice. So let's have a look and take the first photograph. So just allow me to point you through the composition that I've got in mind here a little bit. So we've got the old wooden boat on the bottom right hand rule of first point. We have the cooling tower up this side and we have another cooling tower just off to this side and we've got all the engineering works in the middle and I thought a nice 16 by 9 crop of just this area here would work quite nice. I want to avoid all the mud down there, I don't have a polarizer that I can throw on this and the mud's a little bit shiny so I thought we'll try and avoid that 720 nanometer filter on front of this thing. Let's see the picture. So like I was just saying this is a full spectrum camera so I've thrown an infrared filter on the front of this, it's a 720 nanometer filter. It's great for sort of black and white subjects. I think you can do the false colour with it with the purple trees and the blue skies but I don't really like that look. I kind of like the black and white look with it. So I focused on the boat just in the foreground. I'm going to stop overexposed here at a 25th of a second f5.6 and ISO 100 which is unusual for the Olympus micro feds for third stuff that I use because well natively it's usually 200 so here's the first photograph and I'll show it to you. So let's talk about this Olympus Pen EP1 for a second. I bought it for £68. Now, in some of the video footage, some of you may have noticed the IS-1 light is blinking at me. That is because the image stabilisation in this is stuffed. It doesn't actually work. I've had a quick look around the internet. I'm not the only one that's suffered with this problem. And it looks like it's an easy fix, but one that I'm really just going to leave alone. It's not a camera that's going to see all that much use. I'm not too bothered about it because I use these things so it has a 12 megapixel CMOS sensor inside of it it's not the greatest in the world but it's certainly not the lowest resolution thing I've ever used it has a whopping 10.4 stops of dynamic range which for landscape photography is laughable but I think that's beside the point with this because we're going to be using it for infrared photography anyway and I don't really know how dynamic range affects infrared photography is the lighting is ever so slightly different so it's going to be an interesting one to keep an eye out. I actually quite like the, the format of the camera. It's like a rangefinder style with no viewfinder. There was an optical viewfinder that you could stick on the hot shoe of this camera, but I believe that was designed to work with one specific lens in mind. I want to say it's either 25mm or 17mm. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm not really going to buy into it. It has an LCD screen on the back of it. You can see what you're doing. I just do prefer to put a camera up to my eye, but well, I can live without it. I could probably get something off Amazon fairly cheaply just to just to go on there anyways but you know it is what it is it's a 68 quid camera doesn't work fully but full spectrum modification yeah seems to work all right so next picture of this boat that we're going to take it sits on a bit of an s-bend and i quite like that the problem i've got is showing how it sits on this s-bend nicely and avoiding all of the scruffiness around it because i don't really want all that in there so let's hang around for a few minutes potter about with the camera poke it in different positions and see what we'll come up with So I'm just fettling around now with this composition. There is a load of mud 
which doesn't sound like the most interesting of things to be taking a photograph of, but I really like the texture that they're leaving in front of this boat, and I really want to try and include that somehow. I also want to throw the S-Bend in there that the boat sits on, and try and get something interesting looking. The, the boat's going to be on a rule of thirds point off towards the right-hand side, so we can get the S-Bend of this in. It's a shame there's a bit of a rock wall in the background. This is generally for erosion around the River Humber and all the little tributaries that come off it. It just keeps everything from washing over, especially when we have the high tides. But I don't know if I like it or if I dislike it. I'm not too sure at the minute. Just playing around, just having a fettle, a potter, and see what I can come up with. But I'm getting there. I'm getting close. It just needs a little bit more fine tuning. So this is the composition I've come up with. So we have the mud coming around the S-Bend here with the texture down at the foreground. We have the little speck of land that the boat sits on in the middle ground. We have the boat roughly on the top right rule, the third point, and we just have some sky filling the rest of it. Like I said earlier on, this is the IS-1 that's flashing red at me. That means the image stabilisation doesn't actually work on this, but for the sake of, say if we have a 50 or 60 or quick camera, it doesn't really matter. So let's have a look and get the exposure right here. So we've got F4.5, a 25th of a second, ISO 100. Instagram looks okay to me. Two second timer, here we go. So as I've already mentioned, this is actually a full spectrum camera. The IR UV cut filter has been removed from in front of the sensor on this. So I've taken the infrared filter off and the exposure settings have now gone from being about three stops of a stop overexposed to 2.7 stops overexposed. So that suggests to me there's a lot more light hitting the sensor. Now, I thought it'd be fun just to shoot this naked without any filters and just see how it turns out. So I'm going to keep the composition the same. I'm going to have to readjust the exposure values. So we're now at a 125th of a second, F4.5 and ISO 100 again. Now, because we're playing with different light at this point i'm just going to check the focus so if i just there we go so we've refocused auto focus does still work on this so let's take it again it's got a very pinky purple cast to it there's some natural light in there it looks very infrared to me so here's the same composition again just completely naked and full spectrum which gives me an idea what if i put the uvi i cut filter back in and see how that looks. Well, here's that one. So this is a UV IR cut filter and it essentially replaces the modification on that camera. You can see how it tints red one way and there's slight greens and blues in there as you rotate it another way. I'm not expecting big things from this filter. It costs me just shy of £15 on eBay. And in the world of camera filters, that's cheap and nasty. So again, same composition. Let's see what happens. So I have now undone the modification to this camera. The UV IR cut filter is back in place. It doesn't look perfect, but it looks a lot more natural than obviously the infrared filter and the full spectrum modification. I can see it's blocking some light out because 125th of a second, the exposure for the shutter speed we had last time is now underexposed. So let's have a look. So we're down at a 60th of a second gets the histogram back to where I want it. So the other filter, well, sorry, this filter is obviously blocking out around the stop of light, which makes sense because it's blocking UV and infrared light. So again, let's refocus on the boat because we're playing with different wavelengths of light again. Two second timer. Here's the third and final photo of this composition. Turns out it's a 12 second timer, not a two second timer. Anyway, so I'll show you this one once it's finally decided. There we go. I will show you this one and then I'll put all three on the screen side by side just so you can see what the different filters and no filter look like on a full spectrum camera.
So there we have it, just a quick jolly with my Olympus Pen EP1. It's the first time I've brought it out and used it, and now I've kind of got comfortable with how the controls work and how the camera works. I'm looking forward to using these in the summer months. I think my plan for it is to buy the Olympus kit lens once again. I had the 14 to 42 millimeter lens once before, and I think it would go perfectly with this camera. And then I can buy a UV cut filter and a infrared filter of various different strengths just to throw on the front of this so we can really go out in the summer months when the greenery and that infrared look is really in play. But just to come out and have a little look at this camera, I'm actually pleasantly surprised by how easy it is to use and how much I actually liked using it. Looking forward to the summer now, so thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this quick random video, please do give it a thumbs up and a like. It does help bring you viewers to see my content. If you'd like to see more than that, you can always hit the subscribe button below me and see more nonsense every single week. So until next time, I love you and leave you and say peace and goodbye.